So what is this I hear? <clears throat> Natalie Tewa got back with a boyfriend. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you it was a gimmick. It's social media people. I don't trust them. I'm not boarding. I heard this story. I love this. This is the coolest ever. <laughs> This is the Blaze Podcast. One, two, one, two, Jumbo, Mambo VP, Mambo VP, episode 12 yeah, yeah. of the Blaze Podcast. We're still on air. I can't believe it. What's We're going still on, here, man. We're still here. We're still, still here, here. Man. Still going for our people. <laughs> you know it. How was your weekend, man? Weekend was chilling, man. Nice, I, nice. I, was, I was really just indoors. Um, I mean, been trying to come see you, but it didn't work Eesh, out. Man, what's going on, man? <laughs> No Uber service? We'll get to what it. What happened to your bolts? What we'll happened to your, you know, taxi <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> My man's not trying to visit us. No, no, no. I'm going to pull up. That's okay, man. <laughs> but Read hey, it was low key. How was your weekend? My weekend was jumping. Okay. Yo. Moving listen, around the city? It was beautiful, man. Just going around, seeing talent. Mm -hmm. um, last night, I went to the Shoe Kid and the Gang. Hey. Yo. One, two, five. Rongai, where you at? Yo. Mm -hmm. Rongai has talent, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was really impressed. I believe it. Like, you know, they took over a spot called Living Waters, mm -hmm. and they put a gig and a half. Man, everybody was out there. Ace the Dawn. Mm. I got to see so much talent. I got to see um, High Renaissance. Okay. This kid is flowing. Mm. Oh, my God. I think he's like the next... Um, Next, next king. He of got it like rap. that, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's that dude. Okay. High Renaissance. I was enjoying the fly. I didn't even know he was there because I didn't look at the fly. I just mm. saw, you know, the time yeah. and the venue. Went out there. Shoot, kid, you're doing a good job. Um, you guys, you're killing it. I don't know what to say. There's I mean, so yo, much talent. I admire, admire wrong guy. They have a strong hip hop community wow. down there. I play a lot of those guys yes. on the radio. We should so. go out there, man. Just yeah, kick it. I met often. so many MCs, man. Just hanging out with mad MCs. It let's was do a live podcast a, out there. Yeah, let's go, man. Like, yo, if if y'all are gonna come out for a live podcast, let us know in the comments, and we're gonna pull up to your hood. Wrong guy is building a major hip hop vibe, mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful being out there, man. Just getting out the city. The show was organized by the artists themselves it was artists supporting each other i've always been a big pro uh, a big proponent of musicians creating their own community oh yeah you can be from your hood and wanting to perform at big stages but your own hood don't even mess with you don't yeah you know what i mean so i've always been telling artists please go out there create communities so that even if a sponsor or a partner wants to mess with you they look at your community and they say, mm -hmm. wow, it's tangible first, he's coming with a lot of people yeah he's coming with a community also you learn how to do events it's kind of like you learn the business models you learn how to do business you learn how to relate to the community so the community can also look at you as somebody important rather than just sitting around oh yeah waiting for for gigs to happen they're not gonna happen uh you have to go out there you have to create your own platforms so that even if other platforms start calling you they're basing on the fact that you come with a crowd. That's so a what fact. I saw in Rongai last night was amazing. Mm -hmm. What I saw and, and just watching artists supporting each other and saying, cool, we're not going to wait home at some big gig. We'll create this stuff in our own community. So I urge you artists in your communities, whether it's South Sea, Lagos, whether it's Johannesburg, go out there, create your own events that people can come yes, you know, like i felt good leaving my neighborhood to go hang out in another neighborhood it just felt really beautiful you mm -hmm. know so community 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 build them you there. still need a visa to go out there i mean you know it's nairobi man <laughs> just down the street it's not that far you know it's really cool man uh, checking out the shout outs guy. we got a shout out from uh bad boy breed Yay. he says i hope your show blows up soon come on man prayers let's keep praying like keep share praying. subscribe keep watching subscribe man over here at what's good networks mm -hmm. but a blaze tv and of course afri pods that's what we subscribe doing. who else fardine pro i'm following you bro 
This is a huge difference you're making. Thank you, Fardeen. Thank you, Fardeen. Appreciate your kind words, sir. Fantastic. Mike Wangoho and Jamhuri Ware reacted to the Tony interview. Nothing but love. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. Oakland. That was a really good interview, man. Like, yo, like your interview game is kind of on point, though. On point? Yeah. Dude, you just, this is the first time you've seen this? <laughs> but you know what it is? It was Tony. She's just a good person yeah. to talk to. And you guys have a rapport. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and guess who's visiting us today on the podcast? Femi Uno. Femi Uno. She got a new joint coming out. I think yeah, yeah. Uh, an album's out, right? Yeah, yeah. She's so, about to release it. She's going to be visiting us on the Rewind. Yes, Let so. the show begin. So some strange news reached us mm -hmm. that Nigerians are ordering pizza from the UK and having it flown to their homes in Lagos and other major cities in Nigeria. What's going on with now, that continent? Now, this is my man? question. Yeah. Like, is the pizza frozen while it's leaving the know. UK? What's going on with the oh, UK, is it, man? Is it hot? Like, I don't know. Do they have, like, an oven in the plane? Like, what's happening? Listen, I don't know what's going on <laughs> on that plane, but if I was on that plane... <laughs> That's where we go wrong as Africans. <laughs> That's where you go wrong as Africans. You know? Because how is it that here's a nation mm -hmm. that's got so much poverty? Now, yeah. I understand that Nigeria has a lot of wealthy people. Mm -hmm. But this is just that blatant problems that we have in Africa. The yeah. wealthy don't care about the poor. Yes, uh, you know, bridging the gap. Because yeah. there's no, essentially, there's no middle class in no Nigeria. Class. It's, it's either you're it's rich, either or, you're rich poor. or you're poor. Yeah. I mean, you've seen the champagne that Nigeria consumes. Mm -hmm. You've seen the Hennessy that Nigeria consumes. I mean, they consume the, the highest number of uh, Apple yeah. mobile phones and yeah. Apple uh, devices, Nigeria. I mean, man. And then you got people with poverty in our country. Yeah, like crazy levels of poverty. I don't really understand our, our, our self-hate that we have as, as Africans, even as black people in general, because really like financial literacy yeah. is where we're going wrong. Yeah. And financial freedom is really the only answer to liberating ourselves. So we're still enslaving our own people in a way. It's crazy because if just a hundred rich Nigerians came together to fix our country, you know they can fix it. Oh yeah. But they rather just They don't even watch. need the government, yeah. They just rather watch and um, and order pizza from London <laughs> and whatever else they order <laughs> Nigeria man come on man we're not boarding we don't like that shit please please <laughs> we're not doing that and then you got <laughs> nah. poor people getting beaten up by cops in, in Nigeria by a group of police uh, a, a police uh, department called SARS okay so like a special unit they're going around just if they catch you with dreads or tattoos they just whooping Get out of you, man! Police brutality. I caught this on Davido's page as I was going through. Uh, there's a there's a there's a music industry guy mm -hmm. called Colade. Yeah. R.I.P. Colade to your family. And oh we, man, he we, lost his life. Yeah, man. They shot a straight a straight bullet. He was watching a football game, just hanging out in the hood. Boom. And I think it's somebody I've I've kind of seen on my timeline mm -hmm. when I'm doing business. Either I was trying to book either Wizkid or somebody, one of those artists, and his name came up. You know, I mean, it's a Damn. big Yoruba name, but it could have been him because they said he was in between South Africa and um, and, uh, and Nigeria. And Nigeria. He seems like somebody I know. Damn. R.I.P. Kolade. Yeah, Police in, in Nigeria stop harassing people. Having dreadlocks is not a sign of a cult or none of that stuff that you guys believe yeah, man, so they're, it's going 2019. Around, they're going around whooping people who uh, have dreadlocks and have tattoos they're saying they belong in a cult nah, come on nigeria we're in 2019 that's yeah that's really backward yo listen you can't be we like stand this. with you the people of nigeria the yeah, people yeah. of africa any injustice to one of us is, is an injustice to, to every, all of us all of us yeah, you yeah. Know? so we stand with you uh and call in the stopping of this uh police department called sars stop them by all means if the president can hear this the leaders can hear this abolish that police unit and at least give them how to deal, teach them how to deal with people. You can't just go into neighborhoods and start whooping young people's um, yeah, behinds. Just the police should know the community they're serving. Yeah, you know, you know, so. you're supposed to be serving the people, not. Yeah abusing the people yeah. you know yeah yeah so did you see the nipsey hustles mm -hmm. music sales went over 2776 percent i love it man big up i want to see victory lap number one this week i think the numbers are coming in yeah uh today okay we record this early in the week the numbers should be coming in today and i saw projections of victory lap being number two that's dope. on the billboard 200 this week that's dope so that's amazing man and he owned his masters and everything big up to nipsey hustle i mean his estate you know what happened was really sad what happened to him but um 
he has told us one thing: handle your business. You know, yeah, so that when business. you're gone, your family can still can still benefit from the work that you've done. I yes, mean, sir. We we look at this story. It's caught us a, at a time when we really hip hop was reflecting. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen a lot of crap in the last couple of years of how hip hop has just been, you know, been saturated, overly overly commercialized, overly commercialized. Yeah. I mean, saturated by by you know internet trolls mm -hmm. and, and all this stuff. It was getting better. You know, yeah. the J Cole was taking over, the Kendricks, mm -hmm. and Nipsey was one of those artists that kept it real. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? he kept the fundamentals. Yeah, you know. Um, he was all about the streets, uh, but in a positive way. Yeah. He was about empowering uh, the, his community, yeah. creating jobs, like all the things that hip hop was founded on. Yeah, you know. I mean, Nipsey is an inspiration, a Richian, You know, yeah. father was a Richian. He came from right here across the across you know the continent and mm -hmm. um, the Horn of Africa. Uh, lots of Richians live in Kenya, yeah. all over East Africa. Yeah. So uh, it was a big loss to everybody, to LA, to the hip hop community. Um, to black people, to mm -hmm. Eritrea, to Africa, and just generally, just the human world. You yes, know? sir. Um, Let's keep running those numbers up. I've been streaming Victory Lap like yeah. every day. I'm okay. doing it, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's run those numbers it's up. Really it's really different when do. you listen to it after he's gone, man. It just feels like he was speaking, like mm -hmm. he was speaking to you. You know? Oh yeah, it, it definitely has more weight. I'm a lot connecting of wealth, with the music a lot, a lot wealth, more. Yeah. Um, but I enjoy. I enjoyed Nipsey when he was alive. I, I, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even hold you. Like, like uh, he was one of my favorite rappers. I remember when we were having uh, the discussion of About 2018 albums. Yeah, you, that was yeah. that was your choice. I was yeah. like, yo, man, that Nipsey shit was hard. <laughs> really hard, really hard. I mean, we were playing it the whole weekend. I mean, yeah. the music it just speaks to you different. Yeah. Um, he basically hadn't really reached his peak yet. You know, I think he, he was, was just, just cracking you know? the mainstream. Yeah, yeah he was just. That's cracking really the mainstream. sad that you can live in a neighborhood. Like that, that you really uh, contribute to, and mm -hmm. somebody comes out and just takes you out, and you somebody know? you grew up with too. Yeah, you know, like whole, somebody you really knew. Leads me to ask: mm -hmm. Should rappers move out of the hood when they get successful, or just in general yes when you get no. successful? Do you think yes you know, and no? Yes, in the sense that now you shouldn't live there. You know, we've seen what happens when you stay there. Yeah. Um, but also no, because you also empower your community so that more people can do what you have done. Yeah. You know, I, I see it a lot with Jay. Jay, Jay isn't in Brooklyn every he's other not. day. You no, know, he's got all sorts of different programs. They, you know, they organize sports for yeah. young people. Yeah. They organize uh, scholarships, that kind of thing. He's still impacting his community. He's yeah. still there in a way, but he's not, you know, running around the, the hood, chilling on a corner. And that's what Nipsey did when we hear is like he had left his bodyguard and yeah. you know he didn't have a security detail yeah. and, and he was just trying to hang and that out was because hood. from the story I've heard that was because one of his homies just got out of jail and he was going back you know, to the store to get him some yeah, gear yeah some gear man rest in peace brother rest in peace yes, you know, sir. We, we hope that his family can get over and um, yeah just really like you know we tell artists all the time like yeah uh, it's good to be in the hood but you're a different person now. Mm -hmm. You know, you you're making money. Yeah. You're affecting a lot of people, even people that are not necessarily. A, a, and the a rules of the streets listeners. don't change. You yeah. know, the rules of the streets don't change. When yeah. when they see someone who's successful, that's a lick. Yeah. You know, they'll try and figure out how to make a quick come up off that, mm -hmm. make a name or you know for themselves off that. Yeah. So you know, once you're aware of how the streets is and I think Nip was very aware it was just a very bad like it was just a bad day yeah man yeah. like it's uh, shocked the whole world yeah you know and and listen man it's good to see the love that he's getting um, oh for sure and this just reminds me like hey listen let's love people while they're still here let's give them their roses while they're still here not, that's, that's not after fact. not after man show us your love you know mm -hmm. don't be trying to say oh that podcast was dope when we out of here yeah. <laughs> show us love now right now now. Subscribe. Yes, sir. All we right. need you right now. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, so EPMD is coming to Africa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. April Simon. April 27th. Mm. They're going to be at uh, Back to the City. APMD are going to be in SA. APMD, What's the name man. of the festival again? Back to the City. And I saw like a 20 plus yeah, SA man. acts. They have everybody. Gonna be they have Casper on your vest. It's good to see Stogie T still out there. Ricky Rick. Ricky Rick. That's his name. J Live. Yeah. 
Zuki Coke Dope. Man, I love this, yeah. man. Yeah. I love this. You know, it, it gives it that kind of like festival vibe where you can go in early and enjoy artists. And also, it's just dope to see a variety of acts yeah. all from SA coming together for this. Yeah. You know, like um, I, w- I was just having a convo with Tele um, last week and uh, he's putting together Hype Fest. Yes, of course. And that's happening. I think it's the same weekend, 27th, same weekend. I believe. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's got an all Kenyan lineup, you know, Cali's on there, Saudi Soul, Steph Capella, Ethic, Cancel. That's huge name. You know, yeah, like most of the guys who are really having an impact on the game right yeah. now. Advanced tickets uh, sales are low. Like, it doesn't even make sense. It was just a few months ago, everyone was shouting, play KE, play KE. Come now on, you've Kenya, got a whole... we can do better than this. Yeah, we can do better than this. Go out there, get those tickets for Hype Fest, man. Mm-hmm. Listen, we can't have all these big artists coming to the country if yeah. we don't buy tickets. Yeah. You know, I always find it really weird when, um, when you're doing a gig, you paid money for the artists to come, pay their tickets, pay their hotels, You've done everything. You've booked the venue. And then people are asking you for free tickets. Like, dude, <laughs> how do you expect these people to get here? Yeah. The, when you pay for your ticket, that's how you pay for that guy's travel to get here. If you want to see an artist, a big artist, we can only pay them with, with the money you give us for the ticket sales. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It that's doesn't happen out of a vacuum, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's really sad, man, to hear the hype. The hype has been going on for a while. I mean, yeah, hype. They've put together some some dope shows yeah. from from Mr. Easy to Nasty C to Techno. Like the, they've they've done their fair share of yeah. great work. Even yeah. Richie Spice just yeah. the other yeah, day. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah. And so it's funny that when they're bringing all these other people, people start complaining like, yeah, not, don't, yeah, yeah, don't, don't bring, bring these people. And yeah. then when you're given an all Kenyan lineup, it's like nobody buy the ticket. That's the damned dile- if you do, damned if you yeah, don't. That's the dilemma we have here in Kenya. As, as, as <laughs> it's crazy. Music industry. It's like people know too much. Yeah. I mean, even last night I saw some some lady claiming that Calligraph never helped Kantai, like straight up <laughs> lies, and I was it was trending. And I caught it, and I was like, what? Yeah. "What are you guys talking about?" Yeah, man. You know, people think that everything must be on the net. Like, exactly. So, so, so real Cali- life isn't on the internet. <laughs> so yo. Calligraph should have gone to the net and said, mm. "I contributed mm-hmm. to Kantai and I helped nah, him." Nah, nah, Sometimes nah, you nah. don't really have to say anything, you know. Nah. But just because you don't say anything doesn't mean yeah. you didn't do it. Yeah, it's really bizarre. So go out there, man, guys. Stop talking. Go out there. Support these these uh, these gigs. Otherwise, we can't bring this big artist that you guys want. For sure. I keep seeing people like when you ask them who should we bring, they're like Drake. <laughs> like you Migos. know how much it costs to I'm bring like, Drake. You know how much it costs to bring those guys. <laughs> you know, you know how much the stage costs. <laughs> the production, yo. I mean, these guys. First, they send you their fee. Yeah. And then they send you another technical writer. It's called a tech writer. Yeah. That's another fee. Crazy. You know? And you look at the millions. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Millions and millions of shillings, and people want free tickets, or they're not supporting, and then they keep asking, "Why are you not bringing this artist?" The reason why the artists don't come is because they don't bring themselves. Somebody mm-hmm. has to pay for it. Yeah, you and know? when you see when you see certain big brands bringing this uh, big names, they're yeah. not interested in in the ticket sales. It's really just a big advertisement for their brand. Yeah. So you might wonder why big brands are able to do it. Uh, it, it, they're it's not marketing making, for yeah, them. they're not yeah. making the money back. Yeah. It's just a form of marketing. It's marketing. But if someone is trying to make some money back off this, y'all yeah. better show out. Come on, guys. Yeah. We could do better than this. Y'all better show out. All right. So um, last week it was announced that um, Lupita Nyong'o uh, is debuting a children's book. It's Sulway. called Sulway, yeah. and it's set to come out this October. It's available for pre-order right now, and it's going to be illustrated by Vashti Harrison. And uh, in a statement, uh, Lupita said, I wrote Sulway to encourage children and everyone, really, to love the skin they are in and see the beauty that radiates from within. She's making moves, Strong man. message. Go out there, And she's that. really living that, you feel me? Yeah. Being in Hollywood, which has always been, even when they're promoting, you know, black talent, it's always the the, the ones with fairer skin. You know, she's like she's really like a dark skin beauty, really making it big in yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, and, she changed um, the game. Yeah, she, she she's definitely still changing the game, yeah. even with a book like this. So, yeah. shouts out to Lupita, man. Strong message with which you pre-order that book, Sulway. It's gonna Keep be out your October. Thing. Support her. Yeah, yeah. So, what is this I hear? <clears throat> Natalie Tewa got back with her boyfriend. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you it was a gimmick. <laughs> Social media people, I don't trust them. Yo, uh-uh. you know what's even funnier? I'm not boarding. 
I heard this story. <laughs> I love this. This is the coolest ever. <laughs> What's even funnier yeah. is is that it's Vera Sidika who mediated the whole thing. Oh my lord, this is all clownish. It's, it's I mean, clownish behavior. It just shows all, me it's for the likes. Yes, I it, told just, you. it just shows me you? the social. No, 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 but I do think I do think I that the breakup you, was real. I told though. you they were setting this up so everybody can pay attention to them. That's a pretty smart gimmick. I, I don't think they expected that kind of reaction from the breakup. But since the breakup got that reaction, yeah. they were like, "Yo, hold up." We might have something here that we can use. Yeah. I think that's what happened. And Vera, being even more internet savvy, sat them down and was like, yo, listen, you guys, there's some money to be made here. So they looked at you the guys checks. Th yeah, think about the bag. There's some money to be... So right now, getting back together, I think, is motivated by the grind. But I still believe the breakup. Yo, that breakup I mean, but was you know nasty. What? Well, he, she said that he beat her. Yeah, all that she, is gone now. Yeah, she said all so sorts of money, shit. She said uh, he was He's broke. broke. Yeah, all sorts of nasty things. You know, so they can put all that behind okay, when there's I mean, a check. would you take somebody back that called you broke, nasty, you beat her? Would nah. you take somebody back? Nah. Listeners and viewers. <laughs> nah. <laughs> what's your last straw in a relationship? Nah. When yeah. you break up with somebody and they go public and they start talking all types of smack about you, mm -hmm. would you take them back? Would you take them back? Hit us back. Hit yeah. us back. Let what's us your know. last straw? Let us know. Let us the know. The last time you were in a relationship, I, mm -hmm. well, I don't know. Are you, yeah. are you in a relationship right now? No, no, no. Okay, my man, we need to get my man a Free girl. Free a bird. Right? <laughs> Free So the last as a time bird. you were in a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the last straw that your significant other would do like to take them back? Damn, well, yo, my last straw was actually like, um, you know, uh, talking some smack about my family. Wow. Yeah. I, she had an opinion on my family, and I was like, damn, that's how you feel? All right, I'm done. So that was it? Yeah, that was the last straw for me. You can't take her back? <laughs> nah, I'm done. She, even if she apologizes, she said, you know, I was, I was, I was feeling down. I was, I was not feeling myself that week. I don't think so. For real? Yeah. We mm -hmm. see Natalie took back the same boyfriend that she called broke. Yeah. She called him uh, a woman, a woman beater. Mm -hmm. I knew there was a gimmick in this whole story. I knew it. <laughs> Fought on that story. <laughs> I knew there was a gimmick in this. I did not believe the story from the beginning. When you put yourself your whole life like like your social media is a di is your diary yeah then you don't really have a personal life it's crazy yeah and now and everyone's invested in your personal life <laughs> so crazy. you have to find a balance man some people think that if it didn't happen on social media it didn't happen it didn't happen have you noticed that yeah, yeah, yeah. People there's are a so real it's like there's a, a real disease that's dependence happening. yo bro have you ever checked your screen time on your phone like mm. how much no. time you actually no. spend on your phone the average person who's on the three major social media channels, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, spends up to four hours a day wow. on their phone. Four hours on social media. If you do the math in a year, that's almost 60 days out of 365. Wow. That's ridiculous. It's really bad when you look it's at the ridiculous. figures. It's ridiculous. Really bad. You know? And so human interaction is going low. Since you're cool, your phone is your buddy. So you're not really having real human interaction as much as you would have uh, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. You're getting your dopamine from the likes and uh, all, all sorts of shit. So that's really sick, It's bad. Man. It's bad. We encourage you it's bad. right here on the Blaze Podcast. Go out there, man. Visit yeah. people. Have yeah. real interactions with people. Go see shows. Like yesterday, mm -hmm. I went to this I went to this show. I didn't know what I was getting. It's meaningful. But it was just beautiful like, yeah. to hang out with real people, like mm -hmm. talking real stories and, and just asking them how their day was. Yeah. So go out there. Interact with your community beach out that's a fact to people that matter that's Hang a out fact with your family sometimes put the phone away you know yeah just put the phone away yeah just for you a know. few days yeah. even. just try it you'll see the difference yo strange things are happening belgium yeah has apologized for kidnapping mixed race african babies yeah man back in the day during colonial times it's crazy the colonizer yeah so so apparently back in the day whenever whenever the the natives of the land uh, would have a child with the colonial masters yeah. they would take those mixed race babies back, back to belgium, belgium and separate them from their mothers so you want to tell me there's a whole race of of people in belgium mixed color from from congo burundi yeah. and what other country rwanda yeah wow yeah it's crazy so they apologized. Um, I, I think uh, they're trying to fix the post-colonial relations that they have with some of their, their colonies. Yeah. 
past colonies. But they have to apologize for a lot of things. For a lot of things. Man, the amount of wealth the Belgium took out of Congo. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been to Belgium. You, you, be, you do their museum. Yeah. Their, the Royal Museum of Central Africa. I mean, one of the biggest museums in the world. Yeah. I mean, there's artifacts in there. There's everything. I mean, basically, they took all the culture from Congo. Oh yeah. And then, and even just the money. I mean, Belgium doesn't have any, any, any diamonds, mm-hmm. any gold, but they have the capital. That's you know, Antwerp is where you. You have to sell your diamonds. Okay. Every diamond in the world has to be taken to Antwerp first to be checked. Mm. That's the capital right there. Yeah. And they don't have any. So they took a lot. That's what, crazy. What does this apology really mean, though? I mean, it what might happens be... next? I mean, do they return? Do they do, do they return the mothers to 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 meet their children? That's what happens be, no, now? No, 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 because that's line, that's a long line. I know, but we're, what's we're the five apology generations. for though? Maybe, maybe, maybe this is just me playing devil's advocate. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to fix some of their wrongs. I mean, will and they, this is the beginning. Will there be reparations? Will there be money? This is what I'm looking are they at. Gonna, are they going to like go to all these families and find all these mothers and see their generation? Because I believe some of those people are yeah. dead by now. Yeah, I yeah. think this act open up, uh, opens up the door. For that conversation to yeah. be had, you yeah. know, like, uh, can we have some sort of reparations? Reparations. Can we baby. have? Can we have our, our artifacts back? Yeah. You know, I, I think it opens up the door for, for that. So yeah. because it's a bold the, step. I mean, this is what it is. The, mm-hmm. My biggest problem is this museum, mm. the Royal Museum of Central Africa yeah. in Brussels. I've yeah. been there. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge, huge, huge museum. And all the heritage of uh, Congo Over is there. out there. Yeah, in other African countries. Mm. What happens to that? Will they will they be addressing that? Let's wait and see. They need to. Yeah. They need to. They need to. Research the follow I'm not, up I'm not on gonna, that story. I'm not gonna We're give them any go. I'm not gonna give them any congratulations for apologizing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I I think that's um a couple uh fifty plus years too late. Yeah. Um now we actually need to see more action. Yeah. You know. Uh Fine, you've apologized. Okay, what's the what's the next uh, action? What's the next step? Yeah, we need we need to see action. Reparations. Yes, sir. Reparations. We need that. Belgium. Yes, sir. So get off that, man. This is the section where mm. I just you know I go off on mm. things I hate. And this yes, story about uh, people not being able to buy tickets. Mm-hmm. I mean, here you are. You guys have been crying for Kenyan music. Uh, a promoter goes out there, mm-hmm. puts together a show, and you guys don't buy tickets. You don't buy tickets! Get off that! And then when you see a big act coming out of here, mm. you all buying tickets. I always see, uh, well, you know, it, it could be so-and-so. No, whenever they ticket, see a big artist, you know out, what they yeah. do? You know what they do? <laughs> they're in there like they wow. in there and then you can't go buy tickets for your own people come on come man come on get off that what you need salty soul come on calligraph ethic cancel night boy steph capella night like all the all the biggest acts of the past year are and, on one stage and you're not buying tickets you're not buying tickets come on man we work too hard go out there and buy some tickets damn and man. if you're not supporting kenyan acts Get off that. Get off that, man. <laughs> yes, yes, as you can see in the studio, Femi World. Hello, Femi Uno, what's going on, man? Oh, thank, thank you right so much on. for joining us. Thank you so much for having we me. We love it when people come visit us and just yeah. hang out with us. Femi One, I've known her as an artist. She's been doing her thing. Yo, she was on the Wappy stage. I though. know. Okay. Killing it. <laughs> From like that she was a little good. girl right there. Yeah, I was like 15, 16. Doing your thing. Well, yo, man. what yeah. kind of confidence did you have at 15 to be able to go up on a walk? The Femi stage? One confidence. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, in a group. Uh, we were being mentored by Ukoflani. Mm, it was their yes. project, uh, mm-hmm. so we used to go to Wapi with them. Yeah, yeah. Mm, and dope. Wapi was actually my first platform. Dope, yeah, dope, Big dope. Up. I'm so proud of you. Thank you dope. so much. The children were told to have Ukoflani. Yeah. Mama. And which hood are you from? Kasarani Mwiki. Kasarani. Hey, okay. Yes. 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 Rewind. Yes. This is how we do it. We play you all the music that doesn't get played out there. Play it first over here. And this week, we're being joined by the one, the elegant, the only one, Femi Femi One, right? Femi One. Her album's coming out. She's going to tell you more about it, you know? Uh, Femi One is one of the leading rap 
female artists right now that we, we have in the country. Period. She's out here. She's period. doing her thing. Her career has been just growing and growing. She's just like, you know, building milestones and she's building herself to be one of the artists that you cannot ignore. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is your, what, first? This is uh, my first body of work. It's actually an EP. It's Dope. not an album. Yeah. All, this, all these songs you've been releasing, you still didn't have an album? No. Uh, mm -hmm. What I did, I did so many singles and yeah. there was a time I did a freestyle like of uh, 15 minutes yes. uh, with different uh, different Christ. beats. Yeah. So actually people thought it was an EP or something, but mm -hmm. it wasn't. This is my first body of work. So what yeah. is it called? XXV. Yeah, XSV, uh, it's 25. Roman numbers? 25. Okay. Yeah, 25. Uh, I'll be launching it on the 25th. Uh, 25th is my 25th birthday. Hey. Oh, give it up for family. It's her birthday. 25, 25, Yeah. So cool. it actually means a lot uh, to me uh, in my career and uh, in my life. I'll be turning 25, and this is my first body of work for sure. yeah. launching on the 25th. Give it up, yeah. family one. Go out there. What platforms can they find the music on? Uh, they can find uh, the EP on Boomplay, uh, on iTunes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a pre-order link? Can we pre-order? Yeah, you can pre-order on Boomplay. Uh, I'll leave the link. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Let's get into the music. How we're doing it today is Femi One is visiting us. You know how we do. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Number one, Hio. Femi, Hio Femi, One. Femi, Femi, Femi one. Who, Who produced uno, this? Uno. Provoke. Oh, Femi, provoke out there. Yo, do you understand how deep that is? Yo, break it down. Hakuna Mkatengumu Belechai. Oh, you can dip it, right? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. No. Hey. So inspiration yako ya his song what was the inspiration Uh the inspiration uh, behind this song ni uh nilikuwa nimeka sana bila ku rap okay. so uh, actually what walikuwa nasema femi we miss your rap we miss your rap so this song it was uh, to remind people who is the one Yeah yeah femi one Hey blue femi ticks kasi biashara yo one I'm a Rudy yeah. right there man that's a dope dope song your first Thank single you. right Yeah off the EP Okay and this yeah. is this is the record where the, the has a video Yeah yeah it's actually a video, has a video. Yeah. This video came yeah. out last week, right? Yes. Yeah. Dude, we're so proud to have you here, man. We're proud. I Thank love you. seeing artists like this. This is the kind of artist I've been telling you. Create a community. Create your package. Go out there because nobody can see you unless mm -hmm. you already create it. Yeah. You know? So she was rapping. Like, you were part of a group. What was the name of the group? Islandos. Islandos. Yeah. Oh, my God. Those kids were rapping. I remember okay. back in the day, they used to make our, our dead wappy. So let's go. Song number two, Entertainer. Yeah. Entertain, 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 entertain. Hey, that trap music, huh? Produced by? Jack Jack. Jack Jack on the Jack beat. on the beat? Yeah. Nice. Hey, survive. Enter, enter, enter. Jack, Jack, on the 
wapi walibaki wakitaka mo Account yangu wa subuhi like shika mo Manager pia meja mako femi like shika phone Siku hizi mu by cash nili watch alone Masumbua wana daigu nipeleka home Kasi job bama pesa then leave me alone Na plastic ndio mani mimi si the bangi do Femi uno mi huwa na ingia Na ka high table na skiza ma idea Idea Yo, so yeah, this one put on here. What is going on with this song? Let's get to me, starry, me, starry. What's going on with this song? I actually get criticized a lot. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, in this song, I was actually telling people, mini entertainer, I can do any kind of music because people want me to to stick to uh, one type of music. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm an entertainer. You're an artist. Yeah. You can't stop an artist from doing what they do. Exactly. These are dope it, songs. Man, this is we're wishing you all the how best. How do you deal? How do you deal now, Masumbua? I'm gonna jarbuk palika home. <laughs> For sure, as we do over here at Rewind on the Blaze Podcast, we go into the producer's pick. Ini mm Atujui. -hmm. We don't know this song. We we've never heard it. Yeah. Producer Nyami pick. Okay, let's listen. Amari. Amari. Where's this from? Swaziland. Oh, Swaziland. Okay. I might send her home. If she want my number, I might put it on the phone. But I cannot do it. No, I gotta go. No, I gotta go. Cause I'm always on the road. Yeah, yeah. Bad bitch. I might send her home. Is this kid a star in Swaziland? If she want my number, I might put it on the phone. Hit the reminds me, reminds me of uh, Playboy Cardi, like you know, like a million of Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? yeah. It's that new age trap. I don't know, man. I can't hear the song. Like, yeah. I feel like the beat is not produced it's, well. It's not mastered well. It's not mastered well. Mastered. It's all right, man. It's all right. Like, you know, I bet you maybe he can do better next time, but uh, I'm not I mean, feeling it. I get, I get. I can feel the vibe, but I'm not necessarily feeling the song, you know? I can, yeah. I can get his his, his uh, inspiration. Yeah. He's a product of the little Uzi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's cool hip hop. Yeah. 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 yeah, man. Master it. Master your music, bro. What's on boy's name? Uh, Amari. 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 On a scale of one to five, what do you give it? A five. You give it a oh, five? One, one to five. One oh, to five. one to five. Two point five. Oh, you two point five. Two point five. It's I'm average. giving it a two. It's average. I mean, I dig this. I'm giving it a three point five. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Two point five. I, I understand the kids. I, mean, I get it, but it's just not well mastered. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we it's have to really nice. rate it from the production. Don't release music that's not mastered. You know? Okay. Two for me. Swaziland. Okay. All right. Representing. And uh, of course, it, it's been beautiful having Femi go out there support her. Yeah. Great having you, girl. Thank and you so much. Any, any other thing you want to talk about your music? Um, uh, go download my EP uh, on Boomplay on iTunes. Uh, It'll be watch my over there. Yeah. yeah. Watch my video on YouTube and make sure you subscribe. For sure. Yeah. Play music, Ke man. Support her, Femi One. And if you've never heard of her, now you see her, right? Africa, Femi One. She's Femi coming for you. This week, we're doing three tips with Femi One. Mm -hmm. What Femi One did to launch her music career. Three tips. Three tips. Um, the first one, 
be unique. Um, I, uh, be yourself. Um, I'm Femi One. I don't try to sound like anyone else. I'm being Femi One. So be yourself. Be unique. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is I'm always ready. I'm always uh, practicing. Stay ready. Yeah. yeah. Stay ready. I'm yeah. always practicing. I'm always in the studio. Yeah. And the third thing uh, that makes Femi One Femi is um, I have a team. Yeah, okay. I don't do mm -hmm. all things by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you so have it. a team. Yeah, you, you can do all this uh, by yourself. All you right. So when 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 someone. When, when someone's coming up, you mm -hmm. know, like when you're at the grassroots level, no money, you just have talent, you know, what are some of the key things you need to look at the people around you to consider them to be a part of your team when you can't offer them money? Um, you, you just, uh, you just uh, be with people who believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if it's you, yeah. you, you believe in you, if it's your sister or your friend, you can just be like, "Hey, come, mm -hmm. uh, come, yeah. you be my PR person, and then you grow Pamoja." Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you heard it. Three tips on how to be successful in this business. This is how she did. Femi one. Three yes, tips. Yeah. One, be unique. Two, be stay ready. Stay ready. Three. Have a Have team. A team. Hey, you man. heard it from Femi One herself, when you right stay here ready, on the Blaze Podcast. You ain't gotta get ready. Hey man, can we can we talk about Kaka Empire for a little bit for for a quick second? Yeah. You know, um, uh, I I just wanted to ask you, you know, as an operation, you've been with Kaka Empire for a few years now, right? Yeah, yeah like four years for four years now yeah i mean how is it as an operation for you as an artist is it a, is it a good home for for artists it's a good home for me mm -hmm. um I don't know about the other artists, but uh, for me, it's working. It's been working for me, mm -hmm. and yeah. What I is like it about it Kaka Empire that you love? Teamwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a great team. Okay. And artist mm -hmm. development, right? Yeah. They offer those. That's dope. Yeah. Because that's what artists need. Yeah, they, yeah you exactly. You want to feel like you have a home, you have people that actually, you know, can do all these Care things, for you. things for you. Yeah. You can be an artist, and they help you become an artist. And I think that's what uh, Kaka Empire does. does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, as an artist, even when you sign with a label, yeah. You also got to work, you yeah. know, you got to tell me, them. People think that once you sign, you yeah. just chill, your team will just take care no, of it. No, 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 you actually have to work. Because it's, yeah. it's teamwork. Yeah. Let me get this straight. Is Kaka Empire a label or a management company? I think you should have Dennis on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he will tell us. He will answer <laughs> this question. And from what I understand, because I work very closely with them, is they do everything. Yeah. So they will do artist development, they will manage, and they'll mm. also play as a label. Mm. So it depends on where you are, you know? Yeah, yeah. You might sign an artist that doesn't need the label side. Mm. Yeah. Just like, cool, we'll just do the management. Or yeah. they can say, cool, we're just gonna do the bookings. So I think they just multifaceted 360 deals. All right. You know, so they can do anything. Shouts out to Kaka Empire, yeah. man. And, and uh, big thank up. you so much for making the time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for thank dropping you so by. Much. I know the schedule's crazy. You about to go on tour, right? Yeah, yeah. Bless it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Countrywide thank tour? <laughs> media tour? What are we talking about? I'll let you tour? know. She'll let you know. Damn. Femi Uno out here killing it, man. On Rewind, on the Blaze socials. Podcast. Yes, sir. Yo, that was a great episode, episode 12. Mm -hmm. They still have us on the air. They haven't shut down the internet yet. Hey. The Blaze Podcast has been nice having Femi One over here just hanging out with us. Yes, sir. We want you guys. You guys can come hang out with us, but make an effort. She hit us up. Her management hit us up, like, can we come to the podcast? We're like, cool. We love friends yes, sir. coming out with fresh music and freshness. You see, I'm sure this episode... We're going to get a lot of eyes. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Listen, every Thursday morning, you will be seeing us, the Blaze yeah, Podcast, on What's Good Networks, Buddha Blaze TV, and of course, AfriPods. It's been great hanging out with you. Till next week. Peace. Salute. The hottest thing in the world right now. This is the Blaze Podcast.